Bana sifiwe, nimekamu na Bible kibao. <laughs> because kuna washugaji mob kwa church leo. We are reading scripture, please remain upstanding, Mark chapter 11. And we know this story very well. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Mark 11 from verse 12. And I'm reading the NIV version. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leave, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began to look for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. Have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and to be yours. And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Mighty Father, we thank you for your word, which quickens our spirit, and we know that your word is living and active. And as we break it this afternoon, this evening, in the midst of God's people, may it find good soil, may it bear you much fruit, may it accomplish the purpose why you sent it, may it be an instrument that lifts you up so that you draw men and women to yourself, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Please, you may be seated, and as you sit, tell someone near you, thank you for coming to prayer tonight. Hey, Mwambia, there's a way in which prayer blesses God. Yeah, prayer is obedience. Scriptures say, pray without ceasing. So when we pray, we are in obedience to God. I want to uh, just very much thank God for all the pastors in the house tonight. And kindly put our hands together as we welcome Leverend Aranja Waje of Legious Baptist to come and say hello to God's people. Leverend Karibu Sana. Asante. He'll be telling us more as well about the upcoming conference, and we are honored to have you in our midst. We are Pastor Wanguvu. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. It's a very risky thing to give a mic to a pastor right before you preach, because I could quote scriptures here, and before you know it, it's 45 minutes down the road that I will behave. As introduced, I'm Pastor Wanje uh, from Regis Baptist Church. I'm here with several pastors, uh, Pastor Mburu from uh, Ruaraka Baptist Church, Pastor Ndungu from uh, Marurui Baptist Church, Pastor Tony from uh, Kahawa Sukari Baptist Church, associate pastor there, Pastor Eric from Regis Baptist Church, education pastor, Pastor Ezekiel, Senior Pastor Kahawa Sukari Baptist Church, and another team member, Dorcas, uh, not a pastor yet, but I think in the making. We are here because we had a meeting, but also we had planned to join you in your prayer meeting. As these several churches combine our hearts together to host the conference that was just announced a moment ago. As it said for the very first time, 
Uh, Dr. Tony Evans is coming to real Africa. He's been to South Africa, but we've been telling him, until you come to Kenya, you've not been to Africa yet. And so he's coming. That conference is going to be hosted here. And so we have come to just join you in prayer as we ask God to move mightily in our midst as we gather in his name. And so we look forward to joining you again next Wednesday for prayer meeting, and we trust the Lord will bless us. And so because the preacher has read the scripture, he has already prayed, let me hand the mic back to him. God bless you. <laughs> Asante. Asante. Sasa huyo sio mwingine ni yule yule Reverend Ranger Waje. I think his fame is much bigger than him. But we celebrate him. Let's give him a big hand. I'm informed that there are members of some of the churches mentioned here, Ruaraka Baptist, Narabi Baptist, who are here. If you are here tonight, we'd like to just acknowledge you. If you can see where you're sitting, by a show of hand. All right, I see you upstairs. We celebrate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to pray with us. Wednesday is our refilling station. We come here, we are not in a hurry, traffic jam outside, we enjoy. And we remember that God is pleased with people who are in his uh, presence. There's one more pastor I wanted to introduce, Pastor Steve from the Republic of South Africa. I don't know whether he's in our Mideast. He was coming earlier, I'm not sure. So if he shows up, we will take time to introduce him. Uh, but he's come with a very big Bible, Dixon Tisha's Bible. So, Muzikuja area, Nico, seriously protected the sword. I believe these Bibles will be available at our bookstore, but we'll tell you more about them. We want to celebrate uh, Pastor Amrus Nyangao, who has traveled to Côte d'Ivoire, otherwise known as Ivory Coast. And uh, we just want to celebrate him as he ministers. It's called Continental Ministry. Why don't you unite our faith and speak a blessing in that direction? Father, we thank you for the ministry of our senior pastor. More than 30 years of untainted ministry. Standing solid as a rock. No panic, no fear. Just trusting God every step of the way. And I know that his life is a blessing to many in our midst. His family is an example. We speak a blessing upon them now. And we pray that as he travels, dear Lord, that you'll watch over his going and his coming both now and forevermore. The sun will not harm him by day, neither the moon by night. And dear Lord, we will receive a good report. Give him words to speak. Allow him to interact. Allow him to refresh. Allow him to be released to the people of God. May he be a blessing to the people of West Africa, to the glory of your name. And we pray this in Jesus' name. So I'm at Masanamu, na Kopoa. In a couple of weeks, he'll be traveling to the U.S. Now that will be an international mission, and we will continue to bless God for him. When our pastors are sought after and they are in demand, we are blessing the name of the Lord, because when they prosper, we do what? We prosper with them. Sindia hivyo, tunashukuru mungu. Pia tunabariki wa shugaji wengine from PBC who are in our midst tonight. We acknowledge each one of you very, very specially. I want to bless one couple. I prayed with them earlier. I don't know whether Emilia and Rebel are in the house. So they are celebrating four years of their wedding. Four years. Level. And a video. They had their young son, so they might have stepped out. But we celebrate marriages. How many are See, marriages are of God. Let me speak to the men who are in the house. It is not good for a man to be anakuaga disorganized. Na anakuaga hajulikani. So it is not. So we celebrate Lewell and Emilia four years uh, of marriage, and we are saying from this platform. Marriages are successful because there is the God factor in marriage and they go the distance and we bless the Lord. Tomorrow we are having a wedding right here 
Sikesho, people will be wearing red. When you are in maua, when you are You know, someone was telling me, Pastor Diggs, he's not bought flowers in a long time. So he's planning to buy flowers, then have them lapped up in an envelope. Kama nyama, then at a show up home. Seven me kam na nyake, kubeni flowers. So lovers day. So there's a wedding here between Ken. Ken is part of our prayer ministry and Diana. Sindio ni Diana eh? Sawa. So kesho tunataka tuwabariki leo wakija kesho wanapata place iko poa. Sindio? We want to secure their marriage and their wedding day in heaven. Let's take time to pray because what we agree upon is agreed upon in heaven. Father, we thank you for the journey you have walked with Ken. And the way you have pointed him to this wonderful young lady. And now tomorrow they become husband and wife. We are excited. And on behalf of other marriages, we give thanks. And we want to secure that there will be good weather tomorrow. We want to pray that they'll have good transportation system. That it will be smooth, no incidents. We want to pray they'll be on time. We want to pray they'll have an amazing day. Very memorable to the glory of God's name. And so, Father, we take time to just bless these two, that even their finances, their budgets, you are coming through in an amazing way. You are granting them favor. And not only the wedding day, but their marriage is a blessing to the nations, to the glory of your name. And so, dear Lord, be then glorified and exalted as they wed tomorrow to the glory and to the honor of your mighty name. And once again, we pray this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to take time to pray, but I'm informed that Pastor Steve is here. So, Pastor Steve, I'll give you two minutes to come up here and say hello to God's people. Karibu sana. Hallelujah. It's too long. Hallelujah. Okay, shout, old modern, hallelujah. In olden days, we shout hallelujah. Our father waved their hand when they are shouting hallelujah. But this day, people pocket. Shout, old modest, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you love Jesus, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I thank God for this house. And we give glory to the name of the Lord. For the good life and the good person that God has given to be the senior pastor of this house, Pastor Ambrose, and uh, thank God for all the pastors. Uh, my name is Evangelist Steve, but pastor is a general name. Uh, I'm Nigerian, but based in South Africa. And I'm one of the directors of Africa International Mission that produced this Bible. In one minute, let me just explain to you, we are trying to exchange the Bible to another things. Our generation don't want to carry Bible again. We hold phone, and we will we, be using phone to read Bible in the church, and at the same time, Facebook and WhatsApp message will come in, and you'll be tempted to use it. Now, this is a Bible. This Bible is not ordinary Bible. If you look at it, it has a line, and that line is a commentary. He has a commentary. He has a dictionary. He has concordas compiled in this one. I'm telling you, every church leader, he has a map. Every church leader needs this Bible. When you go to the back of this Bible, you also see the Bible study that has been arranged here. In different topics, unity, study, faith, redemption, well arranged at the back of it. And it's King James versions. So I'm presenting to you, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, the Teacher's Bible. It's written by Brother Dixon, and I'm the director of International Mission to Kenya and other parts of African country. So this is the Bible, and I know that you can pick it. Uh, I'll talk to one of the pastors, maybe pastor the, the music pastor, and uh, you can relate with him. It's a very cheap price. We decided to reduce the price so that every Christian can buy it. 
I've checked the bookshop and I, uh, I saw that the cheapest place I saw it was 5K. Oh, sorry, 5,000 Kenya shilling. And, uh, but we, I'm not going to do that here. In every other part of the Africa that I'm giving the Bible out, I'm giving it out at 1,000 Kenya shilling. Even if you don't want to read it, buy one, put it at your coffee table. When your visitor come and see this kind of Bible, they know you are a Christian. And when devil is also coming and see it in the front, in your sitting room, say, this kind of a Bible, no, I can't enter this house. It will go back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, pastor, music pastor, can you snap me as I'm presenting this Bible to this wonderful pastor? Please make sure you snap it very clearly. Glory to God. As we are waiting for a pastor to set the camera, touch somebody beside you, you are lifted. I don't enjoy the way you are saying it. Say you are lifted. If that person is not smiling, talk to another person. I present it to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm expecting 1,000 everybody in this room to get a copy before you leave this house. You are lifted. Amen. amen. That's our brother. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell someone good things are coming out of Africa. This is our time. This is our generation. Let us have God. Greetings from Northgate, PBC Northgate. And I want to just also celebrate the worship team. Let's give them a big hand. Wonderful, wonderful young people. Yeah. And I want to say, Pastor Digan will bear me witness, 70% of that team is PBC Northgate worship team. Situpatia Mungu Makofi. Hallelujah. Asanteni, asanteni. A faith that moves mountains. A faith that does what? Moose mountains. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what we don't have. So you have gone ahead of time, you've received that what you need, and that is faith. Faith, we said it before, is not belief. It is more than belief. Why? Because also the demons believe and they shudder. So faith has to do some work. Hallelujah. Let me look at James chapter 2, verse 20. James 2, 19 and 20. There's a scripture there. It's good that we consider it as we remember the faith that moves mountains. It says here, you believe there is one God, even the demons believe. So it's not enough. Let's go on to verse 20. He says, if you just believe, then you become foolish. Because faith... Without deeds is, faith without deeds is, some versions say faith without works is a dead faith. So a dead, you can believe everything you want. If you don't make any movement, then really your faith hasn't done much. In the passage of scripture we read, Jesus spoke to a tree. So it's okay to speak to trees, it's okay to speak to stones, it's okay to speak to plots. Kwanza kuongea plot ya shamba ni muhimu sana. Unaka mahapo unaisho, you plot. Wacha, nita kujenga. You know. And then you finish by saying in Jesus' name. If you don't release that power, then it will be very difficult to build. You will get people to help you. They will eat your money. And you will struggle to finish. But if you exercise the power of the tongue over the situation of faith, then you will move mountains. The scriptures say that Jesus saw a tree and he thought the tree would give him some food. And he spoke a very short sentence. He said, you tree, may no one ever eat from you again. That's the story ended and he continued on mission. He went to the temple. He drove out the money changers because they were not allowing people to worship. They'd come to do trade. And I hope that in church today, in our time and circumstance, we allow people to find God and not to come and network 
and make it a club. It is the house of prayer for all nations. You come to church, you call on God on behalf of our 47 counties, and our God hears prayer. And our people change, and Kenya becomes a better country. So in the morning, as they were going back to Jerusalem, Peter saw the fig tree, and it was withered from the roots. You know, normally when trees wither, they start from the top, isn't it? That's when the, 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 the flowers go, the branches, the leaves, it starts to come down. But this one had withered from the, from the roots. And he was like so surprised. Said, Rabbi, the fig tree you cast has withered. And the Bible takes time to put an exclamation mark. The fig tree you cast, I'm looking at Mark chapter 11, I'm looking at verse 21. The fig tree you, you cast has done what? You know, when I was growing up in the village, I had a very interesting teacher. And I just want to explain that that exclamation mark is an important one. So this teacher, he used to do the assembly. So the boys and girls would line up in primary school and they would address you. That's the time when you used to have P.O. Box 17 Nyeri. So all of you, your papers, your documents are coming through the primary school. Does someone remember those days? Or is it only me? <laughs> So the teacher used to say, hey, you, see, you come for this letter, it belongs to your neighbor. <laughs> because, you know, you know the neighbor as Mama Modoni. Now you're hearing another name. So you're wondering. So this particular teacher, I remember I was in class four, about 10 years old. This teacher would be head of the parade. And then he would release us to go. Now, in my mother tongue, the word for go has an I at the end, but another dot at the top. Yeah, some of you will identify. For you to complete the word go, you put an I at the end with a dot. So the students would leave the parade and the teacher would call them back. Say, why are you going before I put the dot? It is not complete until the dot is in place, saying you are now it is to go. So when the scriptures put an exclamation mark here, don't ignore it. It means that Peter was thoroughly surprised. Peter had not expected the tree to wither because it was a very short sentence. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And because of his surprise, and because of the surprise of the church today, Jesus took time to drill down into this situation. And he actually spent time teaching deeply. He spoke thus, have faith in in other words, he was telling Peter, you are an unbeliever. All this time I'm walking with you, why are you surprised? I spoke to the tree and it withered. And tonight, you need to check the condition of your faith. Would Jesus find it fitting or would he find it challenged? He says, have faith in, have faith in God. He answered. And then he said, truly, truly, I tell you. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea without doubting in their heart, believing what they say will happen, it will be done for them as they have spoken. It's a powerful key for kingdom living in the 21st century. In the 21st century, many things are stocked up against you. You know, penetrating the business arena penetrating, you know, networks. They seem to be working for people who don't know God. Hallelujah. But tonight, God is releasing another formula. And he is saying, have faith in, have faith in God. And then he makes a very blanket statement. He says, whatever you say to this mountain, in verse 23 and 24, therefore I say, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, receive it, it is. You know, whatever, whatever is very wide. How many are Whatever is so big. Romans 10, 13. Let me look at that scripture. It has another expansive statement. And we are talking faith. 
He says in Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be. It's a very wide and sweeping statement. So if you are here tonight and you are broke, there is possibility to be saved. Whoever, everyone, if you are here tonight and you've got no valentine, there's opportunity for you to be saved. If you are here tonight and you are turned down last week, my friend proposed to a girl last week. Then the girl said she needs to wait. She has to weigh him. Tekel, tekel, upasin. Check whether he's qualifying. If he's in such a place, there is opportunity for him to be, to be saved. So Jesus said, whatever you ask, believing. So you are actually the enemy of your success. If you are not releasing this kind of faith, then it is you who's changing. It's not God. It says, whatever you ask believing, you have already received it. You know, one of the streets I like to walk in Nairobi, and Nairobi is becoming very difficult to walk. There are many people there, no place to park your cars. But one of the streets I love to walk on is a street called Mwidubingu. It took a long time to get to know what is this Mwidubingu. And then someone told me, somebody from Mukambani, who was very famous during the uh, colonial times. Mwidubingu, I love that street. So one day I was walking on Mwidubingu, and I did the cross-section with the Kenyatta Avenue. I might have told you this story before. And I was in a situation of prayer. I was prayer walking. Tell someone near you, it is important to pray as you walk. And it, it, it's not so spiritual like you want to make it. You are just walking, talking to God. Telling him, God, I need my life to be aligned. I want my life to be as smooth as this tarmac. There's opportunity to pray as you walk. I want to be able to find the next step of my life. You know, there's some people who are walking like in darkness. They don't know whether they are going left, left. So you talk to God as you walk. And I stopped by the INM building. Many of you will know that building. And I clearly had an angel speak to me. And the angel asked me, Look at this building. Look at the one across the road, the huge building. And the angel asked me, do you know there are people who pay rent to someone here? Someone, can you imagine those? You can see them, eh? Especially that INM building. It was the first fusionary building in Nairobi. So when they built it, they built it with fiber cables inside, the power cable communication. So you entered the office and you plugged in and you started to use the office. That building belongs to someone. That's the point I'm making. Belongs to? And that someone has no three legs, you know, like two legs here and another one here, so that he can qualify to own the building. It's a normal guy. The scriptures say, Elijah was a man like you, and Elijah prayed, and God had him, and there was no rain for three and a half years, James chapter 5. Then Elijah prayed again, and there was rain. So there was a man, the angel was telling him, there was a man who came here and claimed the ground. And then he dreamt this building and he established this building. That man can afford to buy uh, the locking chair, you know, just like this. Then when he stops dreaming and uh, waking up, he asks the wife, what date is it? Then in his mind, he says, oh, they'll pay rent soon. You know, you can dream like that because you've already prayed. Hallelujah. A man, a normal man, own this thing. And you are sitting here unable to pay rent. Where is your faith tonight? A faith that moves? You are so scared. Lord, 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 Lord. You know, until you stay in your neighbor's house, until the Lord has gone to sleep. My prayer. Tonight we are asking you to exercise your, your faith. Faith is meant for moving mountains. Jesus said, whatever it is you believe, it will be done for you because you believed it and because you've exercised faith. He continued to say that when you stand praying, holding in, in, anything against anyone, forgive them as your Father in heaven has forgiven you. So he's just saying that if you are asking and then there's, uh, the key can't turn nicely if you're having bitterness in your heart. 
So it's a simple thing to do. If someone owes you 50K, mostly, especially in church, I don't know whether Pastor Wanjo, your church is like that. Here, if they borrow 20K, they don't pay. <laughs> they say, the brother is blessed. <laughs> when he shares them, they say, oh, brother, I know you're very blessed. Can I just borrow another 5K? <laughs> Times are hard. They don't pay back. So it is that brother so that God can deal with him. No, I, I'm talking reality. I know people, when you walk this way, they walk through the other gate because they are afraid for eye contact. <laughs> they want you to meet only in the dark. <laughs> I don't know that I told you that story. You know, a true story, two believers, one owes the other one money, and then he's not paying. Fortunately, he was still picking the call. You know, the bad ones don't even pick your call. <laughs> And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. There are times also I look at the phone. I decide, this phone, do I have the grace to pick it? <laughs> and then I, 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 I encourage myself. I say, why should someone get annoyed if I don't pick my own phone? <laughs> I should be able to pick when I want, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, don't be a slave to the phone. We are saying, have faith. Have ujibu simu. nini? Na imani. So this brother called the other one. Hey, when are you paying me? The brother told him, I am far away in Kampara doing business. When I come back next week, we will discuss. Now this brother who's calling is upstairs on Moya Avenue and he's seen the other brother downstairs. So he asked him, and in Kampara you're wearing a black jacket, eh? You know, he could see him downstairs. We are saying, have faith in it is the people who have hurt you. They've hurt you small things, and God wants to do big things in your life, but they are blocking your faith. They are blocking what? They are blocking your faith. There are some things which block faith. Let me look at Ma Mark Matthew chapter 13, verse 58. Things that block the faith of God. Because we are saying when you believe and you move, then you receive. Ma Matthew 13, 58 let me just pick it up from 56. Actually, 56. They were talking. Jesus was doing things. And they were talking. They said, I all his sisters with us. Where did this man get all these things? 57. And they took offense at Jesus. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. Verse 58. I wanted to focus on that. And he did not do many miracles there because of their Lack of faith. Miracles and faith. Trees withering from the bottom up. Situations changing for you because you've believed God. If you have unbelief, which in the scripture we read in Matthew 11, he said doubt. In other words, you believe something, then you wonder, I that thing is too big. Let me put a situation, a normal situation of life. You are struggling with rent, eh? Because I know there are some of you not today, Mujari parent. You know, we have some spiritual sight. <laughs> but we forgive you as well because the intention is there. <laughs> the spirit is willing, the body is weak. <laughs> we understand, but the Lord will deliver you. When you are unable to pay rent, it is a good time to believe God for your own house. You see the, how it works. Now, if you look and want a house, and then you name the estate, because you need to pray specific. Don't ask God for a house. If he gives you a house in Madare, when you had a chance to live in Kireshwa, it is up to you to decide. Then you come to God praying. When you pray from no rent to a house of your own, it looks like a very big lap. You are going far, isn't it? Then you, ah, you say, Bana, me, I don't know whether this can really happen. It might happen for others. Now you have put doubt. Let me show you one scripture in James chapter 1. He talks about what happens when we doubt. Unbelief, it can really sabotage your faith. James chapter 1, he talks about it. Let me pick it up at verse 6. He says, but when you ask, you must believe and not, and not doubt, and not doubt. Because it is not happening on your own account. It is happening on account of the goodness and the greatness and the grace of Christ. Because the one who doubts 
is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. He's unstable. The man who does unstable. And the scriptures say that person should not expect to receive anything from God. Now that we are in James chapter 1, let me show you one more scripture, verse 17. Just to say that God is not unable, it is your faith that could be a hindrance. Let's read together, one, two, three. Every good and perfect gift is from coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change or shift like an Every good and perfect gift, every dream is from God. He's, God is able to deliver. Hallelujah. What God says he will do, God will. Now the problem is if you doubt. He says you have become unstable, tossed this way and that way. And then you have confused God. Let's say you are in a mat. You know, you are coming down from Kagemi in a matato. People are squeezing you. And that particular day, God allows a pickpocket in the matatu. And they take away your fare. Then when you get to a Westlands, you are very embarrassed because you have no fare, you know, and your, your, your arrest is gone. Now you are looking whether a brother can pass by. That's the time you start to pray, Pastor Digan, Pastor Digan, please pass by. I need to pay this matatu. That's a good time to pray for your own car. Hallelujah. Tell God, ah, this story of being robbed, eh? God, you need to sort it out. I call heaven as witness that I want to drive back in an Uber as an experience of my own car. <coughs> but if you doubt, don't expect to receive. But if you believe, expect. In fact, where Marisa serves, take time drinking your tea and fellowshipping, waiting for someone to pay your Uber. Because you've called heaven. And heaven is a witness that they are able to deliver. Hallelujah. It is in those circumstances that greatness is born. Don't wait to pray and believe God when things are normal and good. It is crisis. You know, crises are caused by the enemy pushing you. The best way to defend is to attack and start calling heaven. Because God is a giver of every good gift. You know, one time... Blacky, I was blocked. You know, that's a time when you fear to take your ATM. Because, you know, the ATM might ask you, hey, are you a thief? You remember he removed. <laughs> you know? Then, you know, a scripture came to mind. That heaven, heaven, where I am going to stay for so long, the streets are made of gold. I had a prayer. I said, Ejo, can you bring my gold now? Me, I don't mind walking on, on dust there. Bring the thing now. Hallelujah. Adversity, time to pray, but pray without doubting, pray without fear, pray believing. Jesus spoke to the tree and didn't pay attention, he moved on. Because as far as he was concerned, the thing is done. Hallelujah. Some of you have come to our offices, you want to get married, you feel everything is right. Biology is coming against you, the years are counting. And you say, Pastor, I have seen a brother. I've seen a brother. Then tomorrow you come and say you're not seeing him anymore in your dream. <laughs> it is called doubt in simple English. You believe today, tomorrow you have no faith. Hallelujah. Someone was asking me the other day, is it okay in the 21st century for the sister to tell the brother you are taking long before you propose? I come up here, my brother's way, you are Yeah, so take initiative. Take initiative. But pray fast. Pray fast. Pray fast. Because the scripture says, whatever you ask for in prayer, you do what? Yeah, you know, I have, a, I have a friend. A real story. The friend loved a sister, but he was afraid to approach her. You know, many men, I don't know why, they, <laughs> they are coming up with some fear. So, because he was friends with the sister's brother, so he used to go to the home and take the brother out. He's interested in the sister, but he's taking the brother. Tell the brother, I really love your sister. She's a great woman. I like the way she walks, especially in her nice shoes. But no, yeah, 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 yeah. She spoils my head. <laughs> he's telling the brother. While he was encouraging the brother, another brother came and encouraged the sister. <laughs> and encouraged the sister for real. That guy is a doubting guy. He has no enough faith. Because faith must accomplish a task. 
You cannot go to a home to encourage a brother. You are not interested in him. Break that barrier. Hallelujah. And walk into the mother's house. And say, I came here to see your daughter. Allah. Yeah. I, I came full of faith. Full of faith. And me, you know me the way I'm looking. We are the people who get rich. <laughs> Talk to my brothers here. Today I'm broke, but just wait and see this space. Encourage yourself because we are saying, whatever you ask for in prayer, you will what? You will receive. But don't doubt. Don't fear. Those are enemies, roadblocks of faith. And the scriptures say, don't expect to receive anything. My brother should not have expected to be talking to the sister. She went, and I went to the wedding, and I enjoyed the rice and stew. <laughs> said, my, my, friend, my friend was misguided. Yeah. So should I suffer because of his lack of faith? I go to the wedding, <laughs> and you enjoy, and you celebrate what to do. And you take a selfie, so that you can send him to encourage him. <laughs> Tell him, brother, next time, talk to the girl. Forget her brother. Don't doubt. Unbelief is a roadblock to faith. Fear is a roadblock to faith. You know, there are some things which really make you afraid. They're in the dark. They're not even there. One time, I was afraid. I remember that very well. I was also young. And my mother sent me in the evening to pick something from the neighboring shop. As I went, it's very dark. I saw some movement. I don't know that I saw some movement or I heard some movement. And I was maybe 12 years old. I, for some reason, somebody had told me, I think it was my grandmother a few days ago, about the giant with an eye at the back. <laughs> an ugly. So when I saw the weed move, I want to believe it was just a bush, but I saw the weed move and I saw the giant. <laughs> I forgot the chop. In fact, I, I dropped the money. You know, the hair at the back of my head stood. I am telling you, I am a champion runner, but they never checked. Because <laughs> I ran when there was no one to count. <laughs> I ran so fast. You know, I didn't wait for the gate at home to be opened. I jumped over it. So I'm also a provoter. They just didn't know. And I reached home in record time. I was afraid. When fear grips you, you become immobilized and you are unable to operate and you cannot pray. But I want to tell you, fear God because he's in control of even that guy with the eye at the back. I don't know whether he exists or he was just to frighten us. You know, they used to use it. At, if you don't eat your food, I'll call the ugly. You know, they to, I don't know whether they exist, but if they exist, they are under God. Hallelujah. You must fight your own fears. Because many of those fears are fake. And they just come to deny your faith. They come to shortchange you on what should happen. The, the legal fraternity, they say justice delayed is justice denied. In faith, we say that blessings delayed are blessings denied. Why should you wait to be 35 and you could have been married at 27? Why? You agitate in prayer. You come and we hold hands. We say, Father, Father, bring the brother. Hallelujah. We don't mind St. Mark. Don't bring him from this other direction. You know, you, you call on the name of the Lord. The scriptures say, whatever you ask for in prayer. Hallelujah. Believing and not doubting and not being afraid. The Lord will do what? The Lord will deliver for you. Why should you be shortchanged when we can pray? Hallelujah. Let me show you a man who believed God. You think it's only Jesus who did miracles? Let me show you a man. His name is Moses. Exodus chapter 14. If you can move there, there's an amazing story. I don't have time tonight to speak about what God used him to do, but a snapshot of who he was. As he believed God. This man believed without doubting. You know the story. The children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years. They should have been here 400 years, but they didn't pray. They didn't exercise faith until Moses came along. Moses came and spoke to Pharaoh. The miracles happened. The plagues came on Egypt. And finally, Pharaoh released the children of Egypt. Now they were heading to the promised land. And they were at the edge of the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14. Now... 
when they were there, the Pharaoh remembered. He said, now I'm releasing them who will be working for me, for free. Let me go after them. And so Pharaoh came big time against them. I'm picking the story, verse 10. Exodus 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Fear, 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 fear. Short changing their faith. Sindio, Moses stood here, Ibaki believing, and a few others. They were terrified. They said to Moses, Moses, was it that there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us this desert to die? See how unbelieving people talk. Hmm? There, were there no graves? They're just thinking how to be buried. You're being buried to go where? Heaven is, he, life is still there. Hallelujah. This is your time. Don't think to die. The scriptures say you are not dying, you will live to proclaim the goodness of our God. You know, the, the children, especially these millennials, eh, they are so fascinated about death. They are dying to go where? Me, me I'm, I, I'm going to heaven. I have booked a place. I don't know about you, but I'm not in a hurry to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not going soon. My grandfather, Arikaka, 120 year evil. So I'm still something like Atas Jafika Middle Age. But in the area. Not going anywhere. So I have to exercise faith now so that I secure the future. They cried out. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be. He could quickly see what was messing up their faith. I don't know whether in your situation you can quickly identify what or who is messing up your faith. Because faith is the only thing that is pleasing to God. And you need this substance to be able to achieve the targets that God has put for you. Say, don't be afraid. I like what he said. Let's just read it together. It's, it's just amazing. The one, two, three, we read together. Moses answered the people, do not be Stand firm. This is important. This is important. There is a terrifying situation. Scriptures are saying, stand. Because the battle belongs to who? The battle is the Lord's. You know, there are some husbands. You go home, your wife is upset. She bangs the door on you. She tells you, go back. Go back where? Stay there. Stand firm. Start talking to the door. Open the same. Open the same. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Start farm. Start farm. Start farm. People are refusing to employ you, and you know there's a chance. Stay at their gate. Hallelujah. Stand farm and speak scripture. Hallelujah. I need to come in to improve you. There you are, Baba. You're in trouble. Eh? Your company can fail if I don't come in. In Jesus' name. You start farm. That's what the scriptures say. And you will see the deliverance, the Lord we bring to you. For me, the next scripture, I, I don't know. I speak it in our. Just stay there. Stay in verse 13. Stay in verse. He said, the Egyptians you see today. This is a faith sentence. Tell someone here, you, the Egyptians you see today. You will see them no more. The brokenness you see today. You will see it no more. The sickness you see today, you will never see it again. The rejection of yesterday, you will never see it again. Just need to be still and wait on the deliverance of the Lord. I'm telling you, the Lord fought the battle. <laughs> the heavens opened and there was a great deliverance for the Egyptians. So in chapter 15, there was a song. Because the Egyptians drowned in the waters. And they did not drown an ordinary drowning. God was there to supervise their death. Verse 19. Let me read verse 19 for you. Then the angel of God, who had been in front of the army, Israel withdrew and went and hid them. Verse 23. The Egyptians pursued them. And all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw the army into confusion. Imagine you are an expert driver and you are going this way. Suddenly everything turns the other way. And you collide with your friend. 
threw them into confusion. Tell someone, God will throw my enemies into confusion tonight. Hallelujah! We are talking about a faith that moves mountains. It activates heaven on your behalf so that there's a confusion in the enemy come. The scriptures continue to say that some other angels became even more ambitious. They came to the chariot and removed the wheel. Yeah, they said, ah, God, let me go down. They removed the wheel. Now you can't drive without wheels even if you're driving a Mercedes. Hallelujah. And they went back to heaven with the wheels. They went to show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Egyptians you saw yesterday, you will never see them again. A faith that moves mountain. Moses said, don't be afraid. Don't be unbelieving. Our God is a man of, a man of war. And the Israelites were able to pass over on dry ground. And they went heading to the promised land. Let me tell you, this victory of Moses was not enough to deliver the Israelites. Tell someone near you, salvation only is not enough to deliver you. <laughs> you have to become a fighter. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence take it by. There are some timid brothers in the house. I want to challenge them because they will not make progress. Because they are not aggressive. They are not picking up the antenna to hear what God is doing. You know, you are made for signs and wonders. God wants to use you in your generation to change lives. But if you sit back and you are afraid, saying, you know, I want to be just an ordinary brother, ordinary brother to take care. Are you, are you, are you, are you banana? You wait for you to ripen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, get up. It is time to work and exercise our faith. Forget about timidity. We want to come into the kingdom firstly. And we want to operate this kingdom. Because we don't have another chance. If you don't exercise your faith today, it's too late. God wants to use you amazingly. Let me show you another man. This man, by the way, why was Moses able to talk about the Egyptians? You see now, you never see them again. Let me show you one scripture, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. Why Moses was talking like that is because he could see God. Hebrew, let's read this together. One, two, three. And it's by faith. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered. Why? Because he saw him. Is that a correct English statement? But who cares? <laughs> if it has faith in it, <laughs> who cares about English? <laughs> this is not an English class. <laughs> this is a faith class. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are talking about a faith that moves. He saw him who is invisible to see. If you're talking about Egyptians never seeing them again, you must have seen it from God. Faith has a witness and an anchor. And the witness is the invisible God. You must be able to see him and know that he's there. And know that he's for you and not against you. Moses, after he saw this God, he could face the unbelieving people and tell them, don't be Afraid. These Egyptians, you will never see them. And even he didn't know that God was going to drown them in the sea. But he just knew you will never. God doesn't give you the full picture. He gives you snippets of the picture. Let me show you one more man who exercised believing faith and moved mountains. And then we will be praying in a moment. The book of Joshua. Joshua was very near Moses. You know, after Moses rested... Then Joshua took over. Joshua took over in a very dramatic way. And when he took over, immediately God needed to raise his standard. And so God spoke to him. So faith can come, either you see the one who is invisible or you hear the one who is invisible. Let me show you one guy who had God in a way that was also very unique. Acts chapter 19. There was a very bad man. Tell, people, tell somebody, they are very bad people. But God knows how to deal with them. You know, when I was in high school, we were bad boys. We ate bread. We ate our own bread. We ate from one bread. <laughs> Even we ate the teacher bread. <laughs> and one day, our teacher was coming from the shop. And you know, boys would time giza giza ramnahi. Aka piwa shenga, the bread for you. <laughs> when he landed his glasses were elsewhere, the bread is gone. Yeah, we were bad. But we had a headmaster 
who used to say, you think you are bad? I am badder. <laughs> He also didn't care about English. <laughs> so he'd lock you in his, uh, in his staff room, in his office. He locks you. He say, you hold there, I beat you. Or if you don't want to fight. <laughs> <clears throat> so Saul, Saul thought he was bad until he found out that Jesus is badder. <laughs> yeah, the scriptures say, I'm looking at Acts chapter 19. Acts 19, verse 1. While Acts 9, let me look at Acts 9, sorry, Acts 9, 1. I want to talk about Paul. The scripture say, meanwhile, he's not changed yet. Saul was breathing murderous threats. Not oxygen and carbon monoxide. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> the guy was a non murderer. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, hey, he's a dangerous man. <laughs> breathing murder. <laughs> Very bad guy. <laughs> And he went to the high priest. And he was breathing murder against the, the Lord's people. Saying, me, I'm so bad. <laughs> Very bad guy. The scriptures say, he asked for letters to go to Damascus. So that when he found people there, he might take them as prisoners. Let's go on. As he neared Damascus <laughs> on his journey, suddenly. <laughs> suddenly. Tell someone, Jesus comes suddenly. <laughs> Hey, tell them, my sudden is now. Amen. Suddenly. You know this guy, he's got bodyguards on his horse. Very comfortable. Saying, I'm the bad soul. Yeah, I breathe mada. Mada, mada, mada. <laughs> they know about me. Eh? I'm written about in the newspapers. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. This was not really, it is how the scriptures are written. It was a slap. Jesus slapped him. Pah! He became blind. Then Jesus kicked him. Pah! He fell down. Yeah. <laughs> then he fear filled him. <laughs> I'm bad no longer. <laughs> the scripture says he fell to the ground. He heard a voice <laughs> saying, Saul, Saul, why do you? Verse 5. He said, Oh my God. <laughs> I used to be bad. <laughs> but now, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> and Jesus told him, I am Jesus whom you persecute. The scriptures say that people were with Saul. They never heard this story. This story was meant for, for Saul. And Saul grew in faith. So tell someone here, you, you are not far from faith. Paul, Paul, Saul was bad. And he got faith. He believed. And also you can believe. But I wanted to talk about Joshua. The point I was making is that the source of our faith is either you hear the voice or you see him. Scripture says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Or faith comes by seeing him who is invisible. As Moses saw him and spoke about Egyptians. Now in Joshua 1, 3, the scripture spoke and he said, I will do Joshua now that Moses has died. By the way, this is an important scripture. Eh? When people die in your, in your home, eh? watch a story, Mingi, where pick up your things and walk. Nakaka, hapo, grave, you want to join them? It's not difficult for God to lap you up and you go. Where well, we will come to your funeral. Most likely we'll have some rice as well after. We will eat. Yeah, but then what happens to your story and the things you could have done, the books you'd have written, the people you'd have encouraged, the people you'd have smiled up. And then they think that uh, darkness has become night. What happens to them? Hallelujah. So God told him, stop stories of Moses. Moses has died. Let's move. And then he told him, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses. Verse 5. Verse five. It was amazing. He said, no one will be able to stand up against you. Some of these scriptures, when you see them, personalize them. Yeah, when you go for interviews, when you go for, you know, rating, KPI rating to check whether you're working, yeah, you go speaking this scripture under your breath. Say, <laughs> this guy is no one will be able to start against me. I'll put a presentation they've never seen. And then you ask heaven to back you up. <laughs> you start to speak and they stand. Hallelujah. Because no one will be able to stand against all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will never leave you and never forsake. Because of this, his faith grew. 
Joshua's faith grew. Let's see him performing in verse chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. This is a man now who's charged up because his faith has been given momentum. In chapter 10, he did something that has never been done again. I told you that our God is a, he's a man of war. Let me pick it up at chapter 9. And this is my last scripture because I want us to pray. Joshua 10 verse 9. Now Joshua has entered the promised land, but you don't take promised land sitting down. Tell someone near you, faith is work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You advance against the kingdom of the enemy. Things don't come to you sat down. You agitate in prayer. You fight your way through. You make progress day by day. You become firmer and stronger as you hear God and as you see him. Joshua was fighting. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took the enemy by surprise. Right? The Lord, again, see what God does. When there is faith activated, the Lord threw the enemy into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, going up to Bethholon and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. But let me just hold there. Did you know that there are people God doesn't like? He created them but is not happy with them. They are called Amalekites. Those guys, you know what they do, eh? When you are making progress, they come at the back and start to pull you. Numa, they fear to come front. <laughs> they know you are a man of faith. They come to the back. They attack your children who are weak. They attack your parents. Those are Amalekites. There is no opportunity to have mercy for them. You throw them into confusion in prayer. Hallelujah. Jesus, the scripture say, blot out of memory. Amalek. He wanted them completely forgotten. These are the ones. Because they have pursued them, no, they've beaten, but they, he's still saying, pursue them all the way. Things like poverty, those spirits of poverty. You, those are Amalekites. You just want to distance yourself. Greed. But you are never having enough. That's a spirit. An Amalek spirit. You speak against it. And it is in this country. Our country, we have people. They have property here. They have property in 40 counties. They have property in Australia. Yakufanya nini. Spirit, you come against them and pursue them, you know, until God throws them into confusion. Verse 11. As they fled, I wanted you to see this scripture. As they fled before Israel on the road, down from Bethlehem to Azekah, the Lord, who is fighting now? And I have read this scripture here before, but it never stops to amaze me. God in heaven, Kube is a stone thrower. <laughs> People from Western Kenya thought they could throw stones. <laughs> the master is here. <laughs> he held large hailstones. They were not small. They were large. And they were very accurate. And the scriptures say, more people died from the stones than the ones the Israelites were killing. Why are you seeing that picture? This is an Israelite. He's chasing an Amarek. Chasing a Philistine. Chasing an enemy. And as he's approaching the enemy, God in his accuracy. You know, I did some math and some physics. If you throw a stone from heaven, it has to have a trajectory. It does not fall down this way. It moves this way. Can you imagine that calculation God is doing? Say, oh, that is the enemy. He's telling the stone, you, you stone, don't touch the Israelite. <laughs> touch the enemy. The stone is coming. <laughs> the enemy is being hurt. By the time the Israelite reaches him, he's dead. Move on to the next one. The scriptures say more people died from the hail than were killed by the Israelites. God tonight is for you and not against you. He said, you tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you. And the next day it withered. It is God at war. In this passage of scripture, Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon. He told them, please wait I have business unfinished. And the scriptures say there has never been a day like that. I want to challenge people of Parklands Baptist Church. God is still speaking and God is still alive. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Why are you still not exercising your faith? He hasn't changed. Others exercised. <laughs> then they died. It is our time now. Please, Start to awaken your dreams. Start to awaken your visions. 
Start demanding from heaven your position of the earth. When God created you, he had the plans for you. And we need to activate those plans tonight in prayer. Why don't we rise up as we take a moment to pray for one another and as we trust God to grant us this faith that moves mountain. You can hold the hand of someone near you as we speak a blessing upon them tonight. The first prayer you are making for your neighbor is that they will believe and receive. We said here that soup is not water. Sindio, soup si maji sivio. So faith also, it is belief plus action. Pray that your neighbor will have belief and act on it and that they will deliver results. We want to see the world changed for the better. Take a moment now, just call on the name of the Lord on behalf of your neighbor that God will change their lives. Let them believe. Let them be active believers. Let them make movement. Let them change lives. Let them pay school fees for orphans. Let them visit widows. Let them touch lives. Come on, move it to the next level. It is not a faith thing alone. It is an action thing as well. You know, God is waiting on you to activate your faith. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out and see the deliverance of our God. Hallelujah. Pray for your neighbor that they will not have unbelief. Unbelief and doubt are roadblocks. Remove them from your path. Whatever it is you are believing, if there is unbelief, if there is doubt, if there is fear, then you completely should change it and you should suck at what God is doing in your life. So pray that God will turn you around to make you an instrument for his honor and for his glory. You could be far, God is bringing you near and God is working with you that only which God can do to the glory of his name. Father, we thank you and we bless you. You are an amazing God. We refuse to fear any situation of our lives. Yes, we refuse to fear the Al-Qaeda spirit. We refuse to fear poverty. We refuse to fear greed. We refuse to fear every situation in this country that is drawing back the people of God. My Father, we dare to dream tonight because our dreams are based on our faith in God. Tomorrow is a better day. The psalmist in Psalms 27, he is saying, I am wet waiting to see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. Our children are successful. They are not going to be taken over by drugs and abuse. No, 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 no. These ones, we have faith for them. And we believe, my father, we believe tonight that you are turning them around. There are four signs and wonders. The scriptures say, the children of the righteous with mighty in the land. We call upon heaven as a witness that these ones are changing tonight to the glory of God's name. In their generation, they will serve God. They will not be ashamed, but they will be a, a successful story. We are going to read about them and we are going to hear about them when the Lord establishes them to the glory of his name. There are things that are nearly frightening you. There are challenges in your life. Tell your neighbor the Egyptians you see today. The Egyptians you see today. You will never see them again. My father, we speak about things that are nearly coming against us. They are so near we can smell them. But we are saying tonight, because God is fighting our battles, the Egyptians we see today, we will see them no more. Moses spoke as one who had seen the invisible. Moses believed God. Moses touched the heart of God. And heaven came down to do his battle. My father, we pray for everyone who came tonight that heaven will come down to do your battles. The Egyptians you see today, they will never be seen again. The opposition you see today, it will never be seen again. Because the hand of the Lord is upon you to do you good and to show God mighty on your behalf to the glory of his name. Pray for your neighbor that their eyes will open. The scriptures say, we walk not by sight, but by faith. Pray that their eyes of faith will open to see the possibilities of God. Yes, you can be down today, but tomorrow God lifts you up. The scriptures say, that wailing may remain for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh, God is touching your life. 
and is making you an amazing person to the glory of his name. It is you that the world has been waiting for. Inside your heart is creativity. Inside your mind are new ideas. New books that need to be written. Come on now. Open your eyes and see God. Because him who is invisible, he is visible in the things that he has made. The scriptures say that men are without excuse. Because everywhere we turn, we see the hand of God. Mighty upon us. Trees, they are testimony. The way the sun moves is a testimony of the might of our God. We walk not by sight. We walk not by our bank accounts. We walk by the testimony of heaven. My father, tonight you are visiting healing upon someone. They didn't believe that could be healed. But we are speaking another story. And we are saying that healing is upon you tonight. Because the spirit of the Lord is here tonight to set every captive free. My Father, we see, we see faith, and we hear God to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. What an amazing God we serve. Worthy of all the praise and all the honor. How we thank you and how we bless you. Finally, pray for your neighbor that no one will ever be able to stand up against them. Because the hand of the Lord is in their lives. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. No one will ever stand up against you. You will have a better argument. You will have a better presentation. You will have better favor. Doors are opening for you. We speak faith into your situation. Your boundary lines are expanding. Your tent places is moving to a new location. The boundary lines are falling on pleasant places. You are the one that God is blessing and not another. This is your time and your opportunity. No one whatsoever will be able to stand up against you. My Father, we thank you for this breakthrough favor. We thank you for what you are able to do. Because no man is able to do what you are able to do. We magnify you and we love you, our God. How we thank you. How we love you, my God. There is none like unto you. From the beginning of time to the ending of the same, you are undefeated. My Father, you sit on the throne, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You start a work in our lives and you are faithful to take it to the day of completion in Christ. Nothing will stand up against us. We hear reports, but those reports, we nullify them tonight in the place of prayer. Because we know that God is for us and not against us. Nothing can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you. While you are yet sinners, you so loved us that you gave up the life of your son to make me have a connection with you. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Once we have not received mercy, but now we have received the mercy of God. We are a loyal priesthood, a people belonging to God that you might declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Yes, we are the people of God tonight. The scriptures say in Psalms 100 that we are the sheep of his pasture. He's minding about you. Ephesians 2.10, he says the plans he made from the beginning of time. He wants to hold your hand and take you to that destiny. The scriptures say you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walking in it. And no one will be able to stand up against you. Because our Lord, he's a man of war. He throws the enemy into confusion. He removes their driving force. He confuses the best of armies so that his anointed ones may make their way. The scriptures say, touch not my anointed because I have a plan for them. They are my feet and my hands. They are my eyes and my mouth. They are impacting the world inch by inch. We are taking dominion. We are created for marvel. We are created for advancement. We are created for dominion. My father, we thank you for technology. People in church today take up the technology space. We talk to manufacturing people and declare that we are making an imprint there to the glory of God's name. We talk to the economists and declare that the economics of God are in there, making our way, and no one can stand up against them. My father, we talk to the political arena of Africa, and we declare that even in that arena, God is making a witness, and no one will be able to stand up against him. My father, we thank you, because you are prospering the people in church, so that they can walk boldly into boardrooms, and they can go across the nations, declaring that our Redeemer length, taking up the good news, saying that uh, men are set free so that they can know our God. My Father, we pray for this, our country, 
Africa is a beautiful land and it is a land of abundance. Yet the people of Africa are sleeping hungry. Because we are praying tonight, we change that equation. And we declare that the people of Africa have abundance of food. My Father, we are a people of bounty. And our barns are filled with the goodness of our God. My Father, you are coming through in our agriculture sector. And you are changing the way things are being done. No longer are we going to do value addition abroad. My Father, we'll do the processing right here in our countries to the glory of your name. My Father, no longer are we going to be called a, a cast people because you cannot cast the people God has blessed. And we want to thank you and to bless you. Dear Lord, we thank you for tonight. We spoke about a faith that moves mountain. It is a possibility for everyone who will hear God or for anyone who will see the one who is invisible. Moses believed you and you delivered the Israelites. Joshua believed you, and you gave him victory against the Philistines, against the Amalekites, and he was able to take possession. God has a plot of blood for you. You need to hear him tonight and take possession. The scriptures say, just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't doubt our God. He's done it in the past, and he never changes. He will do it again so that he shows himself mighty on your behalf. And so, Father, we thank you for everyone who heard your word tonight. And we know that it's not just for hearing, it is for exercising. The scriptures say in James 1 22, do not just be hearers of the word. Do become also doers of the word. Exercise the word so that you see it making progress for you to the glory of God's name. My Father, because we have authority together with Christ, we exercise that authority tonight and we refuse the enemies of God to touch God's people. We put a fire around you so that you are safe as you go and as you come back. We cannot fear terrorists. Terrorists get their life from God. Every step they make is plain before God because when light shows up, darkness has to free. And so, Father, we secure Africa for destiny. We secure Africa for promotion. We secure Africa for tomorrow. We will be decision makers and we will be respected to the glory of God's name. And so we thank you that your word, which never comes back to you void, will accomplish in our lives the reason why you sent it. And we magnify your name, you who speaks to trees and they listen to you. You speak to storms and say, peace be still and they listen to you. Speak to the dead and they resurrect. So if you are here and your dreams have died, also we resurrect them tonight in the presence of our Father. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you are a victor. You are making progress. You are not going down. No one will be able to stand up against you. The hand of God is mighty upon you. And tonight your enemies are thoroughly confused. We celebrate you. You are mighty in God. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of heaven. So you make progress here and heaven is born us to the glory of God. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Thank you. Thank you for your patience tonight. Remember, Thin Vision booklet still available, 600 shillings. And uh, for the declarations, Baba 50. 50 Bob, 50 Bob, 50 Bob. Bear your journey. Hallelujah. Why don't we pray? Dear Lord, once again, we thank you. Faith comes by hearing your word. And we activate that faith. It's a beautiful environment to make progress. Our lives are active, and um, our hands, everything we do prospers. Our ideas are cutting edge, and we are acceptable in the marketplace. We want to thank you. We clothe everyone here with the beauty of heaven. No longer shall you mourn, because heaven is touching your life to make you a sign and a wonder, to make you become sought after to the glory of his name. As you go, you go in the peace of God to love and serve the Almighty. Remember, there's a cup of tea. Please enjoy it. 
and fellowship with your brother, and the Lord bless you big time. Let's give the Lord a big hand as we take the benediction. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and thank you for coming to pray tonight. Remember, books are available at our bookstore and also at the book table outside. God bless you.